<laughs> Good. So what is blockchain? Blockchain is a global internet-based notary service that is powered by peer-to-peer -peer technology. So what blockchain does is it creates an internet of trust. You can transfer value over this network. And this internet of trust means that it can be used as an internet of value to transfer value. It can be connected to the internet of things, which is also connected to the internet of nature. So the potential is to create a global network of trust where we can move resources around with minimal friction, all powered by peer-to-peer -peer technology. Sure, minimal friction means that because the blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network, there's no central counterparty that takes a large fee out of it. So the, um, the fees are very, very small. Um, it's based on market dynamics. Um, but typically, right now, you can very efficiently move value around for a few cents uh, per transaction. So a major advantage of blockchain is that it's a secure network, right? So that all the information is encrypted, and also it is a distributed ledger technology. It means that all the information is shared everywhere in the network, right? So that means if there's a massive solar storm and all the Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets essentially go offline, but there's some cold storage where there's one Ethereum wallet left and one Bitcoin wallet left, that can restore the entire network, right? So, so one, of the, one of the great features of blockchain is that um, it has a distributed ledger technology. Um, that means that all the data is replicated everywhere in the entire network. And that means that if the whole network goes down, for example, with a massive power disruption from a solar storm, but in cold storage you have one Ethereum wallet left, that's all you need to restore the entire network, right? So it's a, it's a very secure system um, built on next generation technology. Right, so it's revolutionizing finance because it does not rely on a central counterparty. That by, by being able to create this network of trust, we can send value to each other without going through an intermediary, which is risky, there could be credit risk, um, as well as the intermediaries take quite a bit of money. For example, um, global payments alone uh, amounts to $1.7 trillion a year. Right, so that's a, a large friction cost. And for doing overseas transfers, for example, remittances, um, these transfers can be up to 10% uh, of the amount transferred. <laughs> these flies. <laughs> the, the system today is um, archaic, right? So banks were invented hundreds of years ago. Um, all of our governance structures are ancient, and they're sequential, and they're centralized, and quite often they're, they're crumbling. Um, furthermore, the most important thing is that our commons are not protected. So it's no one's job to protect the deep oceans or it's no one's job to um, you know, protect the earth from climate change. So there are global, um, global uh, issues that are not addressed. And finally, there are certain externalities that are not included in the financial system. Um, and one of those externalities is earth, basically. right? So you have China, that's an economic growth miracle, but you can't breathe in their cities because, oh, clean air is not included in the formula. So our idea is to reinvent money um, to be able to uh, include these externalities and include natural capital. Okay, so, so what is natural capital? Picture the earth, right? The earth produces free ecosystem services for all of us that amount to $150 trillion a year. That's twice the global GDP, right? All for free. So that's natural capital. Natural capital is what produces clean air, water, sustainable food. So, so the question is, how, how can we make a difference in these big global problems? What's amazing is that as humans, we have incredible power as networks, right? That there are certain problems that none of us can address individually, but if we can find a way to cooperate and to define a shared language for value, for example, like launch a new currency, 
that's backed by natural capital, we can change the world. For example, why not launch a Bitcoin backed by trees? That's what we've done. We've created a digital token that represents a mangrove tree planted on one square meter in Tor Heyerdahl Climate Park. That mangrove in 20 years sequesters one ton of CO2. The implication is that an average American needs to plant only about 20 trees a year in order to be net positive, right? It means that for the price of an iPhone, any human being can be net positive. And this is the amazing thing, that out of the entire, um, in our world economy, there are negative externalities of about $7 trillion per year because we're not paying for some of the damage that we're causing, for example, from flying and carbon emissions that are resulting from that. But for just 1% of average consumer spending, we can actually pay for all the carbon emissions, pay for our impact on biodiversity, and actually be net positive. And that's an amazing idea that as humans, we don't have to feel ashamed that we have a negative impact. We will always have some negative impact, but we can make sure that we have more of a positive impact than negative impact. And it's all about where we put our money. If you put your money to restore a mangrove ecosystem, you can be net positive for the price of an iPhone. So Lique is a global exchange, a global marketplace for any asset. So that's currencies, it'll be stocks and bonds, but we're also introducing natural capital as an emerging asset class. And we are powering the ability to provide liquidity for major currencies based on Richard Olson's algorithms. We're using those same algorithms to provide liquidity for, say, Lique coin, which represents equity in Lique, for our mangrove tree token, which represents trees in Myanmar. So you can literally use the same technology to provide um, liquidity for any digital token. And the future that we're moving to is that everything will become digitized. And that means everything will become a means of payment. Every individual can issue their own digital token, right? So it's a matter of are we a trustworthy individual? If we are a trustworthy individual or organization, the currency that we launch will have a greater value. And we can essentially, um, through big data and through feedback effects, discover which individuals and which organizations are trustworthy and worth supporting. So um, one, of the, one of the great challenges that we have is that we need to act very decisively to reverse carbon emissions. Some pretty scary things happen if carbon emissions hit 450 parts per million, which is, for example, a level at which coral reefs start to collapse. The ocean acidification will be so, so high that the new corals can't form and they'll literally dissolve. And that's a food source for close to a billion people in the world. And 25% of marine species depend on coral reefs as a home. So what can we do to save the, the corals? Well, we can reduce CO2 emissions. And what's the most effective way to reduce CO2 emissions? The biggest impact on CO2 is actually land use, so deforestation. If we stop deforestation, that's like taking every car off the road for the next decade. Mangroves are deforested at three times the rate of rainforests. It's less than 1% of trees that are mangroves and they pack in a super punch in terms of climate mitigation. They protect local communities from flooding, soil erosion. They also play a keystone role in being able to filter water for sea grasses and coral reefs to survive. Altogether, this coastal ecosystem is responsible for a tremendous amount of blue carbon sequestration. So by restoring mangroves, we're investing in an asset, natural capital asset, that's incredibly um, powerful at sequestering CO2, at keeping that in the ground permanently in the marine realm, and as well powering an entire system 
that is vital for food security and um, for human livelihood. So in short, what is TREE? TREE is a digital token backed by a mangrove planted on one square meter in Tor Heyerdahl Climate Park in Myanmar. The project is managed by Worldview International Foundation and the founder, Dr. Arne Fjertov, is an amazing individual who founded that organization with the legendary pioneer Tor Heyerdahl and Arthur C. Clarke, the father of the telecommunications revolution. The park was named in honor of Tor Heyerdahl, um, who uh, was uh, Arna's good friend and who pioneered crossing the Pacific on a raft in a voyage that um, has inspired so many people. So what we are hoping to do here with pioneering this digital asset that is backed by natural capital is to start a movement to invest in nature. So, so the amazing thing with uh, the digital economy is that you can create good money, like literally money as an incentive system for uh, right behavior. Um, so we are seeing the emergence of local currencies, for example. Um, essentially, we're moving to a local barter society. Um, and um, anything can be digitized. It could be the tomato production um, that your friends buy, tomato, tomato coupons from you. Uh, so the technology allows you to create a marketplace and have a secure way of transmitting value. Okay, so over the last year, I've talked to so many people and I asked them questions, for example, what do you think is your ecological impact? How much would it cost to offset that? The answers I've gotten um, have been pretty amazing. People estimate that the damage that they cause is in the tens of thousands of dollars, which is actually accurate. But the amazing thing is that for a very small fraction of that, we can actually do more good than harm. So the concept of what can we do personally to make an impact is we can all pledge to be net positive. It's as simple as that, right? We do certain things that harm the environment, like fly airplanes, but we like to visit our friends. Sometimes we have to fly. It's okay. As long as we, for example, invest in a natural ecosystem, which sequesters more CO2 than we're actually emitting. So the amazing thing is that we're living with this guilt that we're causing this damage um, leaving the future generations a worse world, when actually it costs cents on the dollar for us to do that. So for $50 a year, anyone in the world can get net positive. For the price of an iPhone, you can plant a forest of a thousand mangrove trees that will sequester a thousand tons of CO2. That's something that will pay for your carbon footprint, um, even if you're a frequent traveler for say 20 years. But the amazing thing is, every 20 years, that forest keeps on growing. So you're really investing in a forest um, that is producing life and making you net positive. The amazing thing is that 1% of us on Earth can actually make a difference. That if that 1% of us decides to get net positive, you know what? We can actually pay for the rest of the planet to be net positive. So um, the, uh, the amazing thing is that blockchain is becoming, it's a global movement. So there are meetups all around the world. Um, you can obviously go to liquid.com and um, start a meetup in your local community as well. And Lickhe Wallet, you can download for free. We're also working on a initiative called Blue Life as an entry level uh, digital wallet that is really easy to get on where um, you, know, you can simply with the press of a button um, invest in mangrove trees or Ethereum or other digital tokens. How did I get involved with Ike? Um, yeah, so I, I, met, um, I met Richard Olson in Moscow um, in 2015. Uh, where Sergei Ivlyev invited us both to speak at the Russia Risk Conference. And it was a beautiful weekend where um, Likhe had its first hackathon 
and there was also the first snowfall in Moscow, um, so it was very memorable. And a little while later, um, I had the idea to list forestry credits on the Lick Exchange to create good money, Bitcoin backed by carbon credits. And a lot of the inspiration came actually from my children and from wanting to leave them a more sustainable world. And I called Sergey and Richard up to discuss this idea. And they thought it was a wonderful idea, supported it. I started the Natural Capital Alliance as an organization that supports eco-heroes with capital to protect vital ecosystems. And Richard and Sergey thought, you know, why not join us at Lique to build up a sustainable global marketplace? And um, I haven't looked back since. <laughs>